All right, class, welcome back. This is uh, topic four for unit one, and this is all about relationships in patterns. Don't forget to write your name and today's date. Okay, uh, so we've got an example here on Enviro Challenge Day, grade six, seven classes compete to see which class can collect the most garbage. Each student in Mr. Trask's class pledges to pick up six pieces of garbage. So, how many pieces of garbage will be picked up when the number of students is as follows? Well, if there are five students, then I guess we would pick up a total of 30 pieces of garbage. And if there were 10 students, we would pick up 60 pieces of garbage. And if there was 15 students, we'd pick up 90 pieces of garbage. So the pattern that we're seeing here is that uh, the total number of garbage or the, um, the pieces of garbage is equal to six times the number of students. Okay, so Mr. Lowen's class. Oh, oh, Mr. Lowen. Okay, so they decide that they're going to pick up the same number as us plus 10 more pieces uh, of garbage. So we're going to fill out a table, and one way we represent this stuff sometimes is in tables. Um, so if we've got this row here is Mr. Trask's class. Um, if there is one student, then that would be six pieces of garbage. And then if there was two students, then that would be 12 pieces of garbage. Three students would be 18 pieces of garbage and uh, four students would be 24 pieces of garbage. Now Mr. Lowen's class, remember they pledged to pick up whatever we pick up and then 10, me 10 more pieces on top of that. So if we pick up six pieces, then their class is gonna pick up 16. And if we pick up 12 pieces, they're gonna pick up 22. If we pick up 18, they'll pick up 28. And if we pick up 24, then they're gonna pick up 34. So um, there's a pattern here, as you can see, and we need to be able to write our patterns as uh, algebraic expressions. Okay, so for my class, uh, one thing you want to notice here is look for the pattern. As we increase from one student to the next, what's happening to our amounts? Well, you'll notice that it's going up by the same amount each time. It's just increasing by six. So what we could say is uh, an algebraic expression for my class would be, well, uh, the number of students times six pieces of garbage tells us our total. So we've got 6n. And you might want to make a note here where n is equal to the number of students. Okay. Um, when we look at Mr. Lowen's uh, pattern, you'll notice actually something similar here. It's the same pattern. As we go from one number to the next, it just keeps increasing by six. So um, this six right here really shows up. So this six right here really shows up as the coefficient in our expression. And in Mr. Lowen's case, in his class's case, they have the same pattern, so they're going to have the same uh, coefficient, six n because they have the same pattern. So the question is though, how do we arrive at this at this amount? Well, 6n for one student isn't gonna get you 16 pieces of garbage. We're short, and the reason we're short is because they need to pick up 10 more. So we need to add on 10 more pieces of garbage here. Okay, so the difference in your pattern as you look along in succession in order here, the difference in that amount is gonna to relate to your coefficient. That's gonna help you out later on. Okay, so what we say is that the number of pieces of garbage is related to the total number of students. And when we compare or relate a variable that, uh, to an expression, uh, then what we have is a relationship. So there's a relationship between the number of students and the total amount of garbage being picked up. All right, let's look at this last example here. So Nikki is trying to save up to buy a new iPad and already has $60 in her savings account. Uh, she works as a babysitter and charges $8 per hour. So write a relation for the total amount of money that she will have saved after babysitting for N hours. So we'll just make a note here. Our, our variable N is going to equal to the number of hours. And we want to come up with a relation that describes this. Well, if she charges $8 per hour, 
then that means for every hour she works, she's gonna earn another $8. So part of our relation here is gonna be eight times N, because for every single hour she works, she earns $8. But, and that's our first part. But you'll notice here too that she also has $60 already saved up in her savings account. So if she already has $60 waiting there, then we can add that on to the total, plus 60. And there's our relation, 8N plus 60. Now they ask, okay, so how much will she have saved if she babysits for four hours? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate this expression. So if we have 8N plus 60 is our expression. If she babysits for four hours, to evaluate for four, we're gonna substitute that in, that four we're gonna substitute in for N. So this becomes eight times four plus 60. Now, remember that we have to follow our bed mass rules when we're deciding which of these we're gonna do first. So if we follow our bed mass, multiplication comes before addition, so we're gonna do this step first. Eight times four is 32 plus 60, and then now we can do this step next. 32 plus 60 is 92 dollars. All right, how much would she have if she babysat for 16 hours? Same thing. We've got the same expression. We just need to evaluate what happens when we have n equal to 16. So our expression becomes 8 times 16 plus 60. Just like before, this is your first step because it comes first in bed mass. We want to do 8 times 16 first. Now you might not be able to do 8 times 16 in your head, which is fine. So we'll just go over here on the side and do a little calculation. 8 times 16. So 8 times 6 is 48. And then 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. So we get 128. So this becomes 128 plus 60. And we'll do that step last, which is $188. All right, don't forget to do the recap and then you're all done.